so the future of AI depends largely on what we call AI. I mean, uh, and, and, and what we call AI depends much on how we define intelligence in general. I think that one of the things that happened during the last 50 years as we started to understand this notion of intelligence on a much more fundamental, uh, practical level. So it used to be the case that we thought that intelligence is succeeding in intelligent tests, but that's certainly not, not true even for humans, certainly not for machines. So intelligence, as far as I'm concerned, are, are, are devices or systems which are able to make valuable predictions uh, and in, in a very general sense. And valuable predictions depends, of course, on what you call valuable. Uh, but in, in terms of predicting the future or predicting the labeling unknown data or unseen data before or, 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 or uh, you know, diagnosing diseases or helping in, in, in everything that has to do with exploiting past data or past information in order to make valuable predictions is what, at least in my definition, is intelligence. Now, in that sense, first of all, we learned much better what intelligence is and we are now capable of mimicking it and, and extending it beyond the, the realm of biology, which is really quite fascinating. So, so once we understand intelligence, we can predict where it's going to happen and, and, and when it's going to lead us. And, and, and as I said, I mean, intelligence in, in the biological sense is always involving two components. One is sensing or sensory perception, which is really accumulating data, and exploiting or extracting the relevant bits out of it. So there's usually always a flood of data. So the first part of any intelligent system is to exploit only the relevant part and ignoring the irrelevant. And I think this is the first thing we are now learning. I mean, essentially deep learning, uh, it, it, one of the best things about it is, is really its ability to, to uh, ignore the irrelevant parts. The second part is what we call execution or acting or behavior. So we exploit data from the past in order to create, to make valuable decisions or valuable plans, looking as far as we can into the future. So again, an intelligent system is a system that is capable of exploiting past, long past information or data in order to make useful decisions and, and plans into the future. And so the future for artificial intelligence is very much about extending this window. I mean, how far into the past we actually look or learn from, and how far into the future we are able to plan. To plan. Now this is very much part of my own uh, perception of intelligence, and that's where I think the system's actually going. I mean, so we are going to move from very tiny decisions like what is this object, or what is, who are you, or things like this, which are essentially just one or two bits of information, we are going to extend it to much longer decision plans, uh, many, many decisions, and many, many uh, which, which has to do with, let's say, autonomous driving or, or, self, or, or with uh, making, I mean, planning uh, lifelong, uh, li lifelong plans for people and so on. So decision, uh, AI is going to, to, to move from, you know, very short, very, very localized type of systems to really affecting us on, on much larger scales of times and much larger scales of people. Not only one individual, but a lot of us together planning for society, planning for government, planning for medical systems and so on. So that's how I see, uh, first of all, what happens to artificial intelligence. It's a much better understanding of what intelligence is, and, and then it's very natural to see where it's going. I mean, accumulate more data and make much longer plans, longer, longer planning into, into a pl longer planning horizon, as I call it. Part of intelligence, I think it's the most important part of intelligence, is learn to ignore the irrelevant. I mean, otherwise we are just memorizing things. So it's really, that's what we are all told in school. I mean, it's not just memorizing the answers to a test. This is not intelligence, this is memory. I mean, memory is part of the story, but it's the most interesting part is what we call generalization, being able to, to answer new questions or to do things which you haven't seen before. And in order to do this, we know now very well that we need to learn to ignore the unimportant, the irrelevant. So this is really AI for me, our systems that are capable of doing that. And as I said, I mean, it's going to be more intelligent the further uh, we, we look at more data or, or further past and, and further future. have to forget and I really believe that humans are very good at forgetting that's that's our uh, ignoring uh, ignoring things which are not important
until recently most of the information that was accumulated by was by writing or but you know printing is also very recent I mean, what what really made us intelligent beings or humans in some sense is the ability to transfer information the relevant information from generation to generation so this has something to do with language it has something to do with the writing with with culture with civilization i mean so all of that is essentially you know, filtering the importance and, and pass it ahead. And, and this is exactly what those assist, uh, artificial systems will have to learn how to do. And, and, and so in that sense, it's quite clear where it's going. Predict and, 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 and plan. I mean, it's, it's not only predicting, we are, we are changing the future, we are making the future. So a lot of what we do now will affect the future of everyone. So, so it's not just predicting, it's shaping it. In some sense, that's what I call valuable predictions. You know, when we when we move to the right or to the left, we are changing the world around us. I mean, any any small thing that we do is shaping the future. In, and the, of course, the, the challenge is to shape it in in a way which will be beneficial for as many of us in the long in the long run. And that that's really the biggest challenge of civilization at any time. And AI is just is just uh, the the last chapter of the story, but. Certainly not the beginning. So like, like any powerful uh, technology, it has uh, fears, I mean, it can be beneficial and it can be dangerous. And unfortunately, the, the ethical questions are not part of the story, they're always external to the story. I mean, technology never had inside it uh, the ethical laws. And ethics is, is, a, is a very tricky thing. I mean, we don't really know uh, what is ethical. Uh, nature on its own has no ethics in it, as far as, 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 as strange as it sounds. I mean, so it's always a question of ethical for whom, ethical at what time scale, ethical at what context and so on. I mean, there are different ethical rules in, in wars or in peace, there are different ethical rules in, if there is an accident, I mean, what is more ethical, I mean, to to run a, a, an, old, an old guy or, or, or a child. I mean, who can make this decision? And unfortunately, there is no absolute moral rule, despite the fact that some religions are trying to convince us that there is. There is not. It's an, it, so this is something which the a, artificial intelligence or, or will have to create their own standards, ethical standards, in a way which has to be done by the same mechanism that we train AI today, I mean, by, by learning, by some sort of trial and error. I don't see any other way around it. So, so essentially, the way machines will acquire ethical behavior will have to do with the way they interact with other humans. So as long as humans are always part of the loop, I, mean, I, I, I don't want machines to play with themselves and learn from themselves. They have to be part of the story. The, the decisions and the behavior should be part of interacting with other humans. And therefore, through this and through the general ability to learn, machines will develop ethical systems. And that's my, my belief that will happen. I don't believe that any group of people, whether it's a, you know, a president of a country or a government or a parliament or whatever, can decide and give us really absolute ethical rules. It doesn't exist. Humans are not very good at it, by the way. So the chance is that actually those artificial systems may, may actually help us develop ethics for us in a better way. This, so I'm not afraid of it. I, I really believe that we are changing with AI. It's not against us, it's, it's with us. We, we are shaping our own future together with these machines. And it's not something which we have to worry about. But of course, the, there may be people who are, you know, consider the whole thing as, as dangerous and will be detached from it. And that's dangerous for them. Because those people who will who will stay away from this thing will find themselves eventually in, in, in an inferior position. I mean, you know, it's not only unable to use technology, but unable to enjoy technology. In that sense, I really believe that we all have to be involved. I mean, so even if you are scared or if you are completely technologically freak, uh, you should try to incorporate those systems in your life because it's changing you, and you're going to be in a better position eventually. So I'm basically optimistic about it, but it's going to be a long journey. The term AI winter is a very subjective term that we associate today with some period, recent period, I mean the 90s, let's say, that uh, machines went in different directions. I think this was actually a very important time 
uh, to establish uh, theoretical uh, limits uh, of artificial system, although the technolo technology was more or less halting, or it actually it's not really true. But you know, it, it, winter is always relative to what we call summer or spring. And, and of course, now we see that during the 90s, we're actually moving very slowly. Nobody during the 90s thought that we were in an AI winter. And I think the same is true about the 70s or whatever. Then we, in retrospect, we can see that there was some slowing down and, and some sort of incubation of new ideas. And, and now we feel that everything is moving very quickly. I guess that we'll go through periods of slowing down again because it's inevitable. But eventually this slowing down is usually an incubation of new research, some sort, you know, of, of some sort of uh, transformation of, 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 of what we call paradigms in science. I mean, so, you know, you, there, there always uh, uh, progress happens in jumps uh, in, in these things. And, and so right now we are in a big swing forward. Uh, it, it's inevitably going to slow down and then some other things will come and take over. But I think we are in a very nice uh, upward swing right now. And we should all enjoy it and take advantage of it.